Come on, Toby. We're going to see our friends, the cattle. Let's go, buddy boy. So yeah, a lot of people have been wondering about Toby Dog and the cattle, and will he be okay, and is he at risk of getting injured, and all that good stuff. And so, I wanted to talk about that in today's video. Hey, Kios. How's it going there, Kios? Good to see you this morning. Hey, Ariel. How are you? Over the fence, Toby goes under the fence. How's it going, you two? You got some frosty hairdos today. It's okay, Toby, you know to behave, right? You guys want a biscuit? Oh, watch out. Audrey One is dropping bombs. Here you go, bud. How about you, Audrey One? You want a refill? Yeah, they love these alfalfa cubes, which I've been calling biscuits. So yeah, Toby is getting used to cattle. He has never really ever been around them until they came to our farm a couple of weeks ago. So he is as new to this as I am. You know, the farm he grew up on had sheep and it had chickens, but no cattle. So these are definitely the largest animals he's ever had to contend with. Here you go, bud. And overall, he's done a pretty good job with dealing with them. He knows to respect them and give them distance. He knows their horns are not to be trifled with. I think he's really learned that they are not animals to be played with. Cause I mean, look at them. Would you want to play with that? Ooh, I would not want any of that business. But at the same time, he's not afraid of them. I mean, he's standing right here with me and I'm right here with them and they're, I don't know, two feet away. Definitely downwind of Audrey One's uh, morning tinkle. Hey girl, can I touch you? Oh. Yeah, they're starting to trust me more and more, and so I can actually tap them just slightly, trying to get them used to be touching them. Hey, Kurt, you want one? Kurt, you can take it right from my hand. It's right here for you. Oop, got it from my hand. I know, lately these videos have turned into watching Morgan turn his farm into a petting zoo. It's okay. Oop. Toby, you gotta back off, man. I do get a little nervous that Toby tries to get protective of me around them. And that wouldn't be good because I really don't want them having conflict with each other. And uh, he would definitely lose that battle. So what do you think, guys? We had our first hard frost last night. Back off, Toby. Back off. Kurt's going to let me feed him another one by hand. There you go. Hey, Ariel, you want one? Oh, you can take it, Ariel. <laughs> Keep knocking it out of my hands and now Kurt's going to get it. Okay, Toby, back off. Hey look, it's Annabelle, our most fearful heifer. Hey Toby, are you really just curious about these biscuits? You want one? Take it. Toby's also learned about the fences. He clearly knows how to slink underneath it and not get zapped. I have a hunch he probably got a rude awakening the first day these guys were here and has been very respectful of those fences ever since. Generally when Toby's around the cattle, he stays pretty close to me. Here you go, Kurt. Right off with you. Audrey, do you want it? Come on, Kurt. Getting the cattle used to the camera, too. There might be a point where I have a GoPro mounted cattle, or cattle mounted GoPro, one or the other. You like that bucket, huh? You're getting more familiar with me. This is what we're going for here. And you're getting more familiar with Toby Dog. They were also very shy of Toby Dog at one point. But now they're, they're pretty cool. Even Annabelle, my shyest cow. Here you go, Annabelle. Ooh. <laughs> Audrey just gave Annabelle the business there. Come on, cow. Yeah, watch with me. Watch with me. Toby, sit. Stay. You checking out Toby's behind? Don't poke him with that. I won't be happy with you if you do that. Not that there's much that I can do about you if you did that either, though. Mm, would you look at that? Look who's joining us this morning in the pasture here. We've got the cleanup crew coming out. See all the ducks. Go check in with them. You guys can come visit the ducks if you want. Toby and I are gonna go say hello. Hey ducks, how's it going? Pretty much drank all their water, which is what I was going for. 
It's okay guys, I just gotta empty out your waterer trough. We're gonna clean it out. Look at that earthworm. You know, it's always a good sign of soil life right there when you have earthworms like that just popping up. Because I've been keeping them in this one paddock, I don't wanna leave the water in one spot for too long because it damages the pasture and their manure tends to build up right around the waterer. I'm gonna move it over to this side now. Everybody's very confused by what I'm doing. A little concerned too. They're also curious. <laughs> this is funny. Oh, Anna Green Gables was like, I don't want anything to do with that. Now you'll notice the water trough is currently empty. I'm gonna have to fill it back up again. Excuse me guys. So while the temps dropped down to 29 last night, it didn't really create any issues for me, this hose. So I disconnect it and only connect it when it runs. That'll let me use this thing for a good while. I use this stick to lower it so that I can step over without getting shafted. Okay, Toby, let's go turn on the water. Don't worry, cattle, we'll be back. I'll give you more alfalfa treats too, a little bit. How's it going this morning, geese? You get to eat some frozen greens today, huh? So you might be wondering why I'm running a hose like this through the permaculture orchard. And it's because actually I've decided to rethink my watering system a little bit, particularly in this area. Down around here, I think I just want to do it by hose because, I don't know, I can reach most parts of the pasture with, I don't know, 500, 600 feet of hose. I got a cart with a reel on it that can hold 400 feet. And so if I can get away with just using that, I think I'd be pretty good with it. The polyethylene piping is nice, but then it's sort of like fixed and permanent infrastructure. And I don't know, part of me doesn't want to have to deal with that. Hey, Jeannie, how's it going? We're here to turn on the hose for the cattle. Ah, I gotta tighten it a little more. That's better. How are you doing my little motorboat? Urgh, listen to that engine go. So while I'm filling up the water for the cattle, I did want to take a moment to tell you guys about today's video sponsor. And Toby's gonna to be super excited about today's video sponsor because our sponsor today is Toby's new favorite brand of dog food, Open Farm. I've talked to you guys about this one in the past, but Toby is a super picky eater. Plain old kibble just won't cut it for our boy. You know, usually I'll try to spice it up with some wet food or maybe some chunks of meat or some chicken broth or other types of bone broth. He always likes his duck egg chaser, that's for sure. When it comes to eating regular old dog food, Toby just does not get into it whatsoever. So when the folks at Open Farm reached out to me and said they wanted Toby to give it a shot and they were gonna send me some samples, I was pretty gosh darn skeptical. But I've been recently giving it a go and I gotta say Toby is most definitely a fan of their stuff. Whether it's the dried kibble, the wet food, or the freeze-dried raw stuff they offer, Toby has absolutely gone crazy for Open Farm's lineup of dog food. You know, oftentimes I've had problems with him competing with Pablo for food, or I've had to just throw out old food that he won't even touch and I just waste my money. With Open Farm, it's like a clean plate every single time. And I gotta admit, it makes me happy to see my buddy with a full belly. He works very hard for his food. It doesn't smell too bad. What do you think, Ginny? Get out of there. Hey, get out of there. Go. And so after trying out Open Farm, they asked if they could be a sponsor, and I said yes, because Toby's such a fan. And I think other people with dogs might be fans of this food as well. And right now, Open Farm is offering a special deal for Goldshaw Farm viewers. If you use the offer code GOLDSHAW, you'll get 15% off your first order. So go check it out. And let's see how Toby likes this little meal I've crafted for him today. It's uh, some of their grass-fed beef kibble mixed with some of the chicken and vegetables. Well, Mr. Toby Dog, I got a surprise for you. Oh, I can tell you're excited. You know it's your favorite open farm. Hey, no, nope, you gotta stay down if you want this open farm. <laughs> He's making a beeline right for his house because he knows that's where I'm gonna feed him. Oh, what is this chicken doing in your house there, buddy? What are you doing in here, girl? Get out. Out you go, Bardra. Come on, get out of here. This is Toby's meal time. Look at him. He's being the goodest boy. Okay, here you go, buddy. Dig in. Oh, he's liking it. Look at that little happy tail wag he's doing. He can't even stop wagging his tail as he's eating. <laughs> Enjoy, pal. So yes, thank you to Open Farm for sponsoring today's video and sending Toby all that food. And speaking of food, I should probably feed all these hungry birds.
Toby, what are you doing out prancing around already? Huh? Are you already a member of the Clean Play Club? That was like 60 seconds. He housed that thing. Wow. Usually when I feed him, he like leaves three quarters of the meal and then I have to worry about the cat getting it. And now the water trough is full. See how well that worked, Toby? Come on, buddy. Let's go for a little bit of a walk. We'll check back in with the cattle. <laughs> I think the geese and being around the geese were a good training ground for Toby. Like that Toulouse gander, he's a cranky one. Can't wait to have to deal with him this spring when uh, we're in mating season. He's got a significant other with a nest of eggs. You know, while working with the cattle can be slightly intimidating, I think geese are still more a pain in the butt. So I just want to take you through here actually, because this is the last spot that they grazed. They haven't been here a good, I don't know, four or five days from now. Oh, looks like Toby's having his morning constitutional. Allison always gives me guff when I show those videos. She's like, why are you always showing the dog pooping? I'm like, I don't know. I just kind of think it's funny. Yeah, I had the sense of humor of a six-year-old. Ooh, where's Toby running off to? Yeah, I mean, you can see because of that frost. Got like hard turds. But underneath there's still melting. You can see insects and worms going through there. One of the things I'm realizing is as I add these large herbivores to the farm, there's actually a real value in going in and trying to look at the soil even more closely and look at their dung even more closely. Ooh, here's a good one. I'm just gonna flip this cow pie over. Like, I wish I had a microscope so I could really get in there and see what's going on. I very much started to nerd out and become fascinated with soil bacteria and ecology and what's going on with it all. I'm realizing that that's a big part of how to have well-managed cattle is to have well-managed soil. I guess I should say using the cattle to manage the soil. So when he's going in to visit his friends, I'll join him. Over. I actually hit the wire there. Um, the reason I didn't get shocked though is it's a pulse charger. So it's not like it's a constant shock. It's like a kind of rhythm. And so I just got lucky. Definitely could have hurt if I hadn't been careful. Yeah, I don't know, maybe tomorrow or the next day, I'll move these guys out of this pasture. Probably move them up there, start running them that way. And then that way, just keep looping them through. Hey, Anne of Green Gables, how are you? Anne Shirley. And spelt with an E. Get some more treats for you. How about that? Some folks have asked if I give my cattle minerals, and I do, they're actually in that pan. A lot of folks have suggested that I move them away from the water, and so I will now start doing that. So the water's over there, minerals are over there. Come here, Ann. Ann Shirley. You get shy from me? You know, let me come closer. I know this fella, he's definitely less shy of me at this point. He's got that fat beef guy neck. You can see it. He's going to make good steer. Try again. I mean, it's kind of funny to me. Like when I first started thinking about having a farm, I thought a lot about big animals like these guys or pigs or other things like that and didn't think much at all about soil health or soil biology or any of those things or even how to create an ecosystem. But the more time I start to evolve, in terms of what I'm doing with the farm and how much time I spend. Whoa, <laughs> it almost poked my eye out. The more I realized that to do the big things, you gotta think a lot about the small things. But in kind of a way, that's sort of true about life. Everything does matter and you do have to sweat the small stuff. You know, it's not probably good to sweat it too much, but thinking about the little things and their impact on the big things, I don't know, it does make a difference. What do you think, Mr. Toby Dog? You think these cattle are pretty cool? I know I sure do. I gotta say, thank you guys for the outpouring of love and support as you heard about the news about the puppy. And I did have an update. The puppies are healthy, they are growing. Kim over at Prancing Pony Farm, and I'll, I'll leave a link down below for her info. She's been sending me like, like little photos and video clips, and I gotta say, they are absolutely adorable. I really can't wait to go get that puppy. Like I said, it's probably gonna be like end of January or something like that. The one downside I have to contend with though is I am still struggling to find help with a farm sitter. So unfortunately, my buddy Zach is gonna be unable to do it. And so I'm out there looking for farm sitters. And so if anybody in the, you know, greater St. Johnsbury area is interested or knows of folks, uh, drop me a line. It would be hugely helpful. 
When I was a little boy, and my mom would bake something, usually by the time she got done preparing that thing that she was gonna bake, she'd always let me lick the bowl. Mama said if I'm good, I can lick the bowl. So who today wants to lick the bowl? Will it be you, Audrey? Audrey One? By the way, if anybody knows why I call her Audrey One, drop the reference down in the comments. <laughs> That's for all my hardcore geeks out there. Actually, I shouldn't say hardcore geeks, more like musical geeks. You don't want it, Audrey? All right, maybe Kurt Cobain wants it. You wanna lick the bowl, Kurt? I think you're gonna want it. Oh yeah. You're excited about this, come on, man. You're gonna love it. Good boy, Kurt. I would scratch him on the head right now if I wasn't holding this camera. <laughs> you know, because there's the cubes and then it like leaves like a bunch of shake. And yeah, <laughs> you got to lick the bowl and have all the shake. Anybody else want some? You want to try, Audrey? Kurt was just licking it. He liked it. He'll vouch for it. Now, as I'm looking at these cows, I keep trying to think about if they're pregnant or not. So I had my vet come out to check them. Um, she couldn't really do much because I don't have like a, a shoot and corral system built yet. Um, that's going to be one of my projects for the early spring. Um, I didn't want to do it because I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to want to set it all up. And in particular, when you have cattle with horns like this, you got to have certain types of shoot systems where they don't get caught on the, like the, the apparatus so they don't get stuck. When you have a shoot system, you're able to corral them in the right way and then the vet can get in there and look at them and really for her to check for pregnancy and as well as sort of how they're developing, what it really requires is like a, an ultrasound machine that she has. And so she was looking at them. She said they look healthy, they look good. She gave me some pointers in terms of nutrition and supplements and minerals I should be giving them. And so I'm doing that, <clears throat> but we weren't able to check them. I don't know, especially as I look at Ariel. She's got that wide belly, I don't know. Not, doesn't look super pregnant, nor would they be super pregnant because um, I hope they're not. I really, I'm really hoping from a calendar perspective that they start to calf in like late May, early June. That would be the ideal. And so yeah, if that were the case, we would be adding more cattle to the farm. If they had males, we would not try to breed them because obviously they'd be too interrelated to everybody here. Um, and so we'd castrate them and treat them like steers like our buddy Kurt Cobain over there. And the females we would keep though, for the most part, and uh, use them as future breeding stock because what I want to do is really probably, I don't know, at least quadruple my herd over the next couple of years. Because I know it's only been a couple of weeks, but I am absolutely loving having these guys. Toby, did you just shock yourself on the fence, bud? Oh man, you gotta be careful, kid.